Hi. Hi, everyone. Hello. It's nice to see everyone. Hello. Nice to see your faces. Nice to see you too. How are you nice today? To you. I'm fine today. I'm, all right. I'm wonderful, thank you. Yesterday, I, I wasn't on the lesson because oh. I was on the sea. Oh, good. On the sea? <laughs> Summer yes. vacation. Wow. Well, you can watch on YouTube. <laughs> you want me to send you the link for the YouTube channel? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Let's see, that was day seven. Hello, Paulina. Both Paulinas are here. We got Vlad up at the top, Bogdana, Yubov. Igor. So uh, we heard that there uh, there may be uh, some uh, sirens going on where you are. Uh, if you need to go to a safe place, uh, we'll we'll see you next week. <laughs> um, and if Sasha needs to go to a safe place, we might have another class, extra class next week. <laughs> yeah. I hope yeah. everyone uh, in the safe place. <laughs> uh, That's most important. See. Yeah. Uh, shall we go over the rules again, or shall we dive right in so it's a safe time? I think it might be good. To, we, I think everybody knows the rules now, right? I think we know the rules. Yeah. Okay, All right. So let me share my screen here. So I will only be with you for about a half an hour. And then I have a doctor's appointment I need to go to. But today we're going to finish up our discussion from yesterday. We're going to watch a quick video about language variation. We're going to go over some compound words, um, what language variation is, a little bit of my dialect uh, from West Virginia, and then we're going to play a game. So that'll be exciting. And then we're going to watch another video about Anna with Let's Learn English Level 1, Lesson 12, and she encounters some bees. And then Jill's going to wrap up with more compound nouns and even some conditional statements. If you're lucky, we'll do conditionals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're not lucky. Maybe we don't want conditionals. <laughs> <laughs> and let's make sure we're sharing the sound here. Okay. Are we ready for the yep. video? Yeah. Hi, John. How are you? Hi, Faith. I'm great. What have you been up to? I just got back from my hometown, the place where I was born and grew up. Oh, where is that? A town in the U.S. state of West Virginia. Do you know where that is? Yeah, I think so. Just a few hours from Washington, D.C. Yes, it's actually the only state that is completely in the Appalachian Mountain Range. That reminds me of what we can talk about for our lesson today. Language variation, or dialects. A dialect, or variation of a language, is the non-standard way people speak in a particular region or area in a country. That's right. We learn standard English in school, but many people in their daily life speak a variation of English. Many people who live in West Virginia and other parts of the Appalachian Mountains talk differently than people from other parts of the U.S. because of the mountains. It's called Appalachian English. Do you want to hear some examples? Sure. Great. We have different vocabulary. We have the word pop, 
We also have a special insect that flies at night and has a light on its belly. Do you know what that is, John? A firefly? Yes, same insect, but we call it a lightning bug. We also have different pronunciation. For example, instead of the long E sound, as in creek, some people in Appalachia pronounce this word as crick, with an is sound, as in the word tip. Wow, thanks for teaching me a little bit about Appalachian English, Faith. You're welcome, John. And that's Everyday Grammar. All right, that was a quick, very quick lesson on <laughs> Appalachian English. So we have some questions for you. Maybe you could pick this up, hopefully. Um, so think oh, about and it. We, oh, go ahead. We do have a, a link in Padlet here. Um, let me get to that. Hang on a second. Let me just, I'll just copy that. And uh, for those of you who want to write uh, some of your answers to the questions. Uh, last last time we forgot to give you the the link for the Padlet this week. Put that in the chat for you. And then we'll go back to Bob Donna, do you have a question? No, I want to say that I have prepared a little bit of information about dialects in Ukraine. Ah, yeah, I do want to hear about that. Yeah, we can talk about that. I'm very okay. interested in, in dialects in Ukraine. Okay, right. so we will talk about it a little bit later, yeah? Huh? We will talk a, bit, a little bit later. Yeah. Okay. All right. So... Why do people in West Virginia speak differently than other people in the United States? Vlad? Um, yes, because um, there are mountains and they speak other... Um, oh, how is it called? I forgot. D dialect? Dialect. Yes, yes, dialogue. Yeah, very good, yes. yes. Uh, because sure. of the mountains. Because of the mountains. Yeah, yes. good job, guys. Yeah, because of the mountains. And everyone in the mountains are very isolated. At least they were, you know, 100 years ago. So, um, yeah, good job. So what is another word for firefly in Appalachian English? Sophia? Uh, yes, uh, uh, the another word of firefly is lightning bug. Lightning bug, yes, lightning bug. So I grew up saying lightning bug and not firefly. Very good. What? This might be a tricky one, and it was very fast, but what is another compound word that I say in the video? This might be tricky. Another compound word that I say. Anyone? Sophia, again? Uh, maybe soda pop. Soda pop, yes. Yeah, so that's one. Yeah, that is one. That is a compound noun. Good job. What's another one? So there's there's actually two. Bogdana? Maybe creek. Not creek. Not creek. I say it in the beginning of the video. I say that I'm from... West Virginia, but I say I, I'm from a certain city, right? So that's where I grew up. Ah, uh, neighbor, uh, hometown. Hometown, yeah. Good job, Bogdan. So, Thanks. yeah, hometown. Hometown is the place where you were born or you grew up. Yeah, hometown, we say. Good job. That, that was a tricky one. I wasn't sure if we were going to get that one. And so um, I think it was Bogdana that said soda pop, right, is a, a compound noun. Is it, remember from yesterday, we had closed compound, open compound, or hyphenated compound? Roma, which one is it? Open uh, compound. It's an open compound. So soda pop, right? So some people, we split them and just some people say soda. 
And in West Virginia, we just say pop, but it is soda pop together as an open compound. Good job, guys. Yay. Now, uh, Bogdana or Paulina, I can't remember who it was. Tell me about uh, VLX, VLX in Ukraine. Yeah, and I have prepared a little presentation like with two slides or three slides. Oh, oh, you do. Can I share? Okay, go ahead. Okay. I love it. Thanks. Okay. You did. You did some extra homework. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm preparing to school, so yeah, I need to homework. Nice. Okay. And can you see? Yeah. Okay. I will talk about three main dialects of Ukraine. And uh, first of all, a southeastern dialect, and it cover uh, the biggest part of Ukraine. You can see it; it's yellow color on the picture. And the uh, people of this uh, part of Ukraine use words like "khodju" and uh, "zvonyu" instead of "khodju" and "zvonyu." It's like to walk and to call. Then we have another dialect. It's northern dialect, and uh, the capital of Ukraine, Kiev, is situated in this part of Ukraine. You can see it here. So people there uh, use such words as murahi and pitch instead of murah and pitch. It's like an oven and an oven. And can you repeat that, Bogdana? Could you repeat that? Yeah. One more sure. time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, people of this part of Ukraine, uh, which speaks northern dialect, use words like murahi and pitch instead of murah and pitch. It's oh. like an arm and an oven. Oh. And the last one is southwestern dialect. It's a red color. So uh, for me, it's the most different and the most difficult one. And people of this region use uh, such words as uh, sobi, ta, ho, fino, instead of sobi, tobi, yoho, harn. It's like itself, uh, yourself, him, and co. And thank you for your attention. Yay! Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for that. I was not expecting that, but that's. That's amazing. Good job. Good research. Yeah. Good little presentation. Good job. I really like that. Very cool. Anyone else? So do you all speak a different dialect? A kind of, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, a little, little variation. Good job. That I love that. I appreciate that so much. Then all right. I... We have even more dialects, but it's the main three. Those are the main three. Like those are the big regions. Yeah. yeah. Good job. Paulina, do you have a question or a question? Uh, no, I have a uh, uh, text, mini text about oh, dialect oh. in Ukraine. Go ahead. Dialects we, we can go are, off. Yeah, go ahead. Dialects it. are words uh, peculiar to the speech uh, of only the inhabitants uh, for a certain area. These words are mostly not understood by uh, uh, those uh, who live uh, in another area. For example, uh, uh, or pivot. It is uh, or rooster. Nenya uh, or Bachko. It is Nenya or father. Bushpo and uh, uh, Lalepa. It is uh, Busco and uh, Stork. Uh, and Vidite uh, Abo uh, Bachite. It is Vidite uh, or See. Oh, nice. I can hear the slight Thank differences. You. Yes. Good. Very good. I saw another hand. Thank you so much for that. I saw another hand, Yvonne. I wanted to correct a bit. These three are called uh, super dialects. Super, okay. Super dialects. Because they're they're like bigger. They're uniting all the dialects. And then there's smaller dialects in like the smaller regions or towns even. Uh, 
the most, uh, I can no, say, yeah. uh, different uh, shepherd is the uh, uh, south, southwestern. Okay. But Very good. You can see it more. Sophia? Uh, I have an example like yeah. uh, uh, you say uh, pet, uh, and we can say it in different names like Jarovnia or Skovoritka. Oh, so multiple words for one word that we would have. Nice. And that's because of the different dialects? Nice. Bogdan? Yeah, and uh, in the southern part of Ukraine, most of people speak uh, two languages, Ukrainian, two languages. Uh, Ukrainian and uh, Russian. And yeah. uh, it and uh, that reason why uh, a lot of people use uh, it's like a dialect, a name, uh, Surzik. It's when you uh, add Russian words uh, to Ukraine, uh, to Ukrainian. Uh, like and, you mix uh, them. Yeah, mix. And uh, it sounds like in Russian and uh, like Ukrainian. It's like a dialogue. It's interesting. Very mm -hmm. cool. I think we call that code switching. Code switching? But is, yeah. it, is, but is it code switching or is it like a mixture of it? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Do they make new words or can they just go back and forth between Russian and Ukrainian? Or is it like a mix? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a mix? So it makes you. Okay. Wow. I did not know that. And Leopold, you'll be our last uh, volunteer and then we can move on. Was in the place, there is a lot of dialect. Hmm. Where are you at? I was in Chernivtsi. Chernivtsi? Okay. So you have a lot of dialects there. Yes. There are a lot of dialects. Wow. Do you know how many? Uh, yes. Uh, like potato in there, they say kartopla or barabula. barabula. Oh. Uh, what is it normally in Ukraine? Potato in Ukrainian is? Kartopla, but uh, they said barabula. Bar barabula? Yes. Wow. <laughs> Very good. All right. We're going to move on. So if you have more interesting things about dialects, Maybe at the end, you guys can talk about it a little bit more. We have a lot to share with you today, but I'm so happy that everyone was so excited about dialects. I didn't think that that was gonna be a hit, but I appreciate it. And thank you everyone for your research and your comments. I love it. Okay. Okay, who wants to cahoot? <laughs> oh no. This is about compound nouns. And some of these we had yesterday, but some of them, we have not, and they're not all about insects. But you guys were really good at the insect ones yesterday, so I threw in some some different ones. Sorry. Oops, sorry, I, 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 I touched my mouse there. Yeah. I'll bulba, bulba. I'm gonna switch over now to because I gotta stop the share and then switch to okay. And sound here. Oh, I wonder if we can we can change the uh Oh, 80s vibe. Oh, reggae. Oh, do you like reggae? Yeah. Let's try reggae. Get down in the groove here. <laughs> <laughs> With DJ Dr. Jill. <laughs> it sounds great. <laughs> and notice our background today. Yeah. We heard that today is Ukrainian flag day. <laughs> yeah. I really like those colors, blue and yellow, because they are also colors from my hometown, from my university, blue and gold. 
Ja. Oh, somebody said Bulba is a Belarusian word. Oh, it's a Belarusian word? I mean, go down. I have a question. Uh huh. Do you know about Ukraine before the war? Yes. Yes? Yeah. But because I noticed uh, a lot of uh, people in America don't know about what is Ukraine and where it is before, yeah. before war. Yeah. We're, we're not very good at geography, <laughs> some of us. But my major was Slavic studies and Russian. So I studied the whole area. So, and yeah, I went over to Eastern Europe a few times, um, but never made it to Ukraine, but I always wanted to. So. I listen to actually a lot of Ukrainian music. So I'm, a, I'm, a, I guess a weird American. Like I, <laughs> I, I had a lot of like Ukrainian connections. I have um, a really good Ukrainian friend. Um, we went to school together, so have some interesting Ukrainian connections. And and as for me, before COVID hit, uh, we were planning to come to the Voice of America was planning to come to Ukraine to work with teachers on developing the new English curriculum. Um, but as with many other things that kind of fell apart <laughs> COVID. during COVID. <laughs> my, okay, my shall we? Yep, go ahead. Okay. I to conference that I in Istanbul. Igor asked, is that you asking, uh, asking me if I've been to Ukraine? Uh, no, I have. Here, I'll turn this down a little bit. I hope to visit one day. Yeah, I couldn't hear what the question was. Go ahead, Igor. Uh, have you ever uh, been to countries that are in Eastern Europe? Yes. I've been to the Czech Republic and Romania, and I was very close to the Ukrainian border in Romania. I could have, I could have jumped, could have jumped into <laughs> Ukraine from Romania. I've been to, uh, Czech uh, Republic and Romania too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So people are asking, when are we going to start? Okay, let's, let's start. start. <laughs> we have forty-one players right now, and let me see if we can. Can you get the, the sound? Oh, let's see. There we go. Full screen. There we go. And now I can turn the sound back up a little bit here. Okay. Birdhouse. Okay, good job. <laughs> Everybody knows goldfish, right? <laughs> Ooh, we saw this yesterday. So we had a we had a comment. Uh, somebody said they only see the the cards with the answers. Yeah, if on your phone or the window that you're looking at the Kahoot in. So you gotta you gotta share make two windows so you can see the um you can see both the questions and the answer thing if you're doing it on the computer. 
It's a little complicated, but I think you can handle that, right? <laughs> and let's see, number four. A lot of answers. You like my the new answers, crackers there? <laughs> answers are popping up. <laughs> yeah, they're popping like this thing. My favorite snack. Yes, popcorn. Everybody got that, that one, right? That was too yeah. easy. I think it's popcorn in, in Ukrainian. Popcorn? Yeah. Yes, of course. Popcorn. <laughs> of course. Ooh, do we know this? Taylor Swift. <laughs> Where are you, Taylor Swift? Oh, Ooh. that was a little harder. Scared bird. <laughs> but yeah, it's wearing a Taylor Swift shirt. So it's and a Swift crow. Faith, can you explain what that thing is for? To scare away birds in fields, like cornfields. So if they see it, they'll get scared. Yeah, so it's a scare crow. <laughs> scare, scare the, the crow. <laughs> Okay, Whoa. that one's a little tougher. Yeah, snowflake. Star. <laughs> Ice star. It looks I like, like a that. star. <laughs> I was trying to be creative with them. This might be really tough, guys. Same talk. Not the best picture either, I tried. Not the best mm -hmm. picture. Sorry. Oh, we do know this. Brainstorm. Yes, where you're thinking and it's a storm in your brain. And everybody suggests ideas and yeah. you look at them afterwards. Oh, we saw this yesterday too. Butterfly. Or <laughs> what did you say to do now? And oh, some people were fooled by dragon bug <laughs> and butterfly too. Ivan <laughs> says, I believe I could fly. Yes. <laughs> My favorite thing to do in the summer. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, this one. Good job. And we have something called a fire pit too, that looks like. Fire pit. That's very popular, especially during COVID. Everybody would have their parties around a fire pit, so it would be safe <laughs> outside. Oh, and we were just talking about this earlier today. And you got it. Wait a minute, firebug. That's not the correct answer, right? Oh no, it's not supposed to be firebug. <laughs> it's supposed, supposed to be, to be fire firebug. Like a... <laughs> oh. It's not a firebug, firefly, <laughs> or lightning bug. I tricked okay. myself on that one. All right, so here's our podium. It came up Yay. pretty fast. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, I have so got to go. Good. I will see you all next week for our last session. Um, and Jill will be on with you the rest of the time, okay? So I will see you next week, okay? Bye, guys. Okay, bye. Bye, bye. 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 Wait, what? No. Well, Faith is just has to go, but I'm just going to stay here. <laughs> okay, bye bye. Wait, wait, and we're gonna bye we're bye. gonna see have, have fun nice with day. we're gonna have fun with Anna. 
Uh, she's going to go visit a beekeeper. Um, have any of you ever been to a beekeeper's place? You've seen seen someone who keeps bees? No. no. Yes. Some some people yes. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. I hear that yeah. uh, that you in Ukraine uh, making honey is a pretty uh, a good business. Oops, what happened here? Um, just go forward. Okay, here we are. Let's 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 listen to Anna and the beekeeper. Wow. Did you know that bees are dying? That is bad news. If all the bees died, there'd be no food. Bees are very important. Yes, they are. <laughs> Speaking of bees, one of our little friends is here now. You know, Anna, if you ignore it, it will fly away. But if you swat it, it might sting you. I'll ignore it. I can ignore it. See? I'm ignoring it. Anna, are you afraid of bees? What makes you say that? Anna, you should call my friend Caroline. She's a beekeeper and a bee educator. If you talk to her, she'll probably help you get over your fear of bees. I'm not afraid of bees! <laughs> Here's her card. In this lesson, you can learn about conditionals. They have if, and, will, or would. There are two kinds of conditional sentences in this lesson. Type 1 conditionals have a real event and a result that probably will happen. Chances are good. Here is the pattern. If plus present tense verb will plus future tense verb. Kave uses this when he says, If you ignore it, it will fly away. Type 2 conditionals have a possible event and a result that may or may not happen. We don't know. Here is the pattern. If plus past tense verb would plus infinitive verb. Kave uses this pattern when he says, If all the bees died, there'd be no food. Look for the if in the sentence to find more conditionals in today's lesson. I'll color them, too. I think I'm at the wrong address. This does not look like a place where bees are kept. Oh, sorry to bother you. I'm looking for beekeeper Caroline. I'm here to take her learn to love bees class. You're in the right place. I'm Caroline. Oh, nice to meet you. Um, Caroline, I thought this class used real bees and real hives. It does. If you look in my backyard, you will see my bees. I'm a home beekeeper. What? You live with bees? That is really amazing and at the same time really scary. It's not scary. If you come, I'll show you. Caroline, how many bees are in that hive? About 30,000 in each. What? That's amazing. But aren't you afraid they're gonna come out and kill you? Not at all, Anna. Even my children help me. Tell me, why are you afraid of bees? I don't know. Well, when I was a little girl, my mom ran out of honey, and I really wanted honey for my pancakes. So, I climbed high into a tree and hit a beehive with a stick several times. Then I reached inside with my bare hands to pull the honey out. That's when I got stung a lot. Caroline, if you hit a beehive with a stick and reach inside, you might get stung. No, Anna, if you do those things, you will get stung. Yes, I did. And you know that it was your fault you got stung, don't you? Yes, I did. Bees know your feelings. And if you stay calm, the bees will be calm. 
If you're nervous, the bees will be nervous. And if bees are nervous, they may sting. So please, be calm. I will be calm. I am calm. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. <sighs> I'm ready. Great, let's get our equipment on. Okay. Wait, wait, I'm not ready. I'm not calm. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Give me one minute to be calm. <sighs> are you ready for one more conditional sentence? If you are not afraid, you will join us next time to learn more about bees. So what did you what did you learn about about bees there? <laughs> you have to be calm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to be calm. They can uh, tell your feelings. Yeah. And, you have to be normal. And to the bees know, know your feelings, so you must be calm in order they to be calm too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that uh, that in childhood Anna uh, um, Anna a bee stank Anna. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And there so, was uh, about no, there were about thirty thousand bees in one box. Maybe not box, but a hive. There are about 30,000 bees in one hive. In one hive, yeah, yeah, right. So, it <laughs> so why did Anna visit the beekeeper? So uh, here we have, this, in, this is in a Padlet uh, that if you want to answer the questions, uh, for those uh, watching on YouTube, uh, I think we, we can, Share the Padlet um, URL. And um, so why did she be visit the beekeeper? Uh, Sophia? Uh, her friend said that he really afraid of bees and uh, his friend Carolyn can help her with this. Yeah. So Kave, her friend, uh, said that uh, he knows somebody who could help her get over her fear of bees. Um, how about Polina? What surprises Anna about the backyard? Um, maybe uh, because um, uh, they uh, wear a special uh, clothes, uh, these bees. Oh. So that they were special clothes. Um, let's see, Igor, how about you? What do you think? Um, uh, I want to answer the third uh, question. Okay, all right. What did Anna learn about bees and people's feelings? Uh, that uh, bees are dying because uh, uh, of the uh, shortage of food um, and uh, bees uh, can sting you um, uh, when you're nervous when you're nervous and in oh. one uh, hive uh, can live uh, about uh, so, uh, uh, 30,000 uh, of bees mm -hmm. yeah and did anybody have another answer to the second question what surprises Anna about the backyard. Oh, Valentin, we haven't heard from you. And yes, okay. Anna was surprised because the yard with bees was very near to uh, beekeeper house. Mm -hmm. uh, Car uh, Caroline. Yeah. She said, you live with bees, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> okay. And maybe also the number of the bees. And the number of bees, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Ostap, was that you? That there are so many bees in the backyard. Uh -huh, that there's so many. And how many bees do you think that beekeeper has? 30,000. Oh. But she 
she have a lot of uh, boxes with bees, not only. Uh -huh. So more than 30,000 probably, yeah. yeah. All right, good job. So um, our next uh, activity is to put these events in order. And uh, I think Sasha has left to go to a safer place. Uh, <laughs> we can uh, try it in our Padlet. Let me switch over to Padlet here. And we have that there. Oops, maybe not. Oh, which is the Padlet here? Hmm. Okay, so we actually we don't have. Let's let's we could let's. Which one did I send to you guys? To let's try it right there. Oh, I just got that one. Okay, let's do a new one here. Jill, if you want, we can try a uh, Mentimeter. Oh, you got your back. Okay, I yeah. didn't see you there for some moment there. Okay. <laughs> Let me stop the share and you can do put the Mentimeter up and we'll need to get that code. Uh, well, I guess it's the same code that we had before. Yeah, the I same code for, for today. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go show that. Um, In the chat, yeah. Two, five, six, four. So go to menti.com yeah. and put in two five yeah. six four and eight zero one one. I will share my screen. And oh, just before you do that, I I was do, do some people need to have the QR code. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me show the QR code code so people can grab that if they need to. This is is this the one from you today? Oh, no, this is yesterday. No, it's uh, for <laughs> yesterday. Here's the one for today, right? Yeah. Okay. I put the wrong number in the chat. Let mm -hmm, me mm -hmm. correct that. Sorry, guys. It's like I'm lost without faith here. <laughs> okay. Now, everybody got the code? And... Yeah, eight nine six two four nine two eight. And Sasha, take it away. So here are the events of the video. Rank them from first through the seventh in the order that they occur in the video. So this is when Anna is talking about her childhood and the mistake that she made in relating to bees. What did you think about the beehive in the video? <laughs> could you tell what that was? Could you repeat, please? Oh, what did what did you think of the fake beehive in the video? Uh, Anna Anna Mateo makes a lot of her own props. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was a handmade beehive. <laughs> mm -hmm. Based on a on a balloon, <laughs> paper mache balloon, I think. <laughs> Oops, somebody's in the waiting room there. And how about somebody who we haven't heard from yet today? Uh, read the the events in the correct order. Would like to do that. Oh, Mary, we haven't heard from you. 
Wanna go ahead? Oh uh, yeah. First was Anna wanting honey for her pancakes. Second, Anna's mother does not have honey. Third, Anna found a beehive. Fourth, Anna climbed high into a tree. Fifth, Anna reached in to get some honey. Six, Anna hit the beehive with a stick. And the seventh is the bees got angry. Mm -hmm. So um, does everybody agree with that? Um, no. Anybody, anybody think that there, we might make one little change? Here? No. no. Can... Rom Roma? I think yes. I think uh, we need to swap uh, the first and uh, the second. Oh, okay. You want to swap the first and the second. Okay. Anybody else have a change you want to make? I think she hit the beehive. Oh, let's see. Bortan? I guess uh, we need to. Mm, one second. Change the order. I mean, uh, Anna climbed high into a tree. It was the third one. And Anna found a behave. Uh, it will be the, uh, the fourth. Okay. And let's see. Ostap, what do you think? I guess he first hit the beehive and then she reached in the game to get some honey. Yeah, she hit the beehive first and then reached in. Okay. And Vlad, how about, what do you think? Um, so I think the first Anna's mother does um, uh, not have honey. Anna wanted honey for her pancakes. Anna found mm -hmm. a behave. Anna mm -hmm. hit it with a stick. Uh, the bees got angry. No, wait. Uh, Anna climbed um, high into it. Tree. Uh, Anna climbed high into a tree, and Anna reached in to get some honey. <laughs> okay. So, shall we watch just that part again? Yes, because we have a little bit of disagreement here. I can tell, and let me go. Can I stop yeah. the sharing? Yeah. 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 Uh huh. And let me go back to let's go back to the video here. Share that. And I'm going to just zoom forward to the part where it uses the pattern. Kill me. I don't know. Well, when I was a little girl, my mom ran out of honey. And I okay, so the mom ran out of honey. That's the first one, right? Really wanted honey for my pancakes. So I climbed high into a tree and hit a beehive with a stick several times. Then I reached inside with my bare hands to... So she climbed high to the tree, right? And then she reached... Then she hit it with a stick. And then she reached inside. I thought that she oh, hit it with a stick from the ground. Oh, uh huh. Let's see. Back there. Yeah, so she. To a tree it looks like, and yeah. hit a beehive with a stick several times. Then I reached inside with. So she hit it and then reached inside. My bare hands to pull the honey out. That's when I got stung. A lot. Okay. <laughs> So it was kind of tricky.
So that was the, the story. And um, what did you learn about conditionals? So have you heard of this word before, conditionals? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Remember? Some, some yeah. of you have? Yeah. Uh -huh. And so um, this is uh, kind of like talking about cause and effect, right? Something happens and another thing happens. And, uh, and it's, it's things that are possible to happen. The other kind of conditional is the things that are not really possible or not, or not likely to happen. Okay, so who would like to try to finish um, the first sentence here? Hands here. Um, Diana, we haven't heard from you today. Okay, if you are calm, the bees will be calm. Okay, so if you're calm, the bees will be calm. Everybody agree with that? Yes. Okay. Valentin? Yes. You want to do number two? Yes. If, the, if you are nervous, the bees will be nervous. Okay, does everybody agree? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. All right. I think you're you're pretty good at this kind of conditional. Let me go to the next section here. So uh, we have another mentee for you where you can make some more conditionals. And I'll let's uh, if if you scan that. So it's yeah, I will share same code that we used before. Yeah. You got to look at those options carefully. Sasha made some tricky <laughs> answers there. Could you share your card again? Your oh. card? Mm -hmm. card? Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Jill, yeah. uh, could I show a correct answer? Sure, yeah. The last one. Okay, you will probably pass it. All right, do we have another win? Next. If you take your umbrella. I think I can uh, show the correct. Okay. 
the first one. All right. Who'd like to read that that uh, answer? We have uh, Roma. You want to want to read the correct Can answer? Can I change my opinion? Uh huh. Sure. Uh, you want to get a right in the rain? It's true. You will uh, get that. It's also true. Because uh, rain uh, can reach uh, your shoes. And oh. you will get that. <laughs> okay. But the rain won't stop. And uh, <laughs> you won't stay, uh, you won't stay dry. It's true. Because uh, rain also rain on the shoes. <laughs> your shoes, yeah. <laughs> So the umbrella doesn't keep you totally dry is what you're saying. But some people might say, if you take your umbrella, the rain will stop because then you'll have to carry the umbrella around all day and there'd be no rain. It's... <laughs> some people say, if you don't want it to rain, bring an umbrella. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> so do we have another one, Sasha? Yeah. So here you want to fill in the beginning of the of the sentence. Okay, before you show the correct answer, Sasha, let's see if somebody uh, would like to uh, share with us what they think okay. is the correct one. Who wants? Raise your hand if you think you know the correct answer for this one. Uh, Paulina. Paulina. If, uh, if you went to a library, you will find the book. I think oh. it. Oh, okay. So went is the past tense of the verb, right? Yes. So the correct part to follow that would be you would find the book, right? So it's it, this is the conditional where something actually didn't happen, right? Like if you would if you went to the library, you would find the book, but you didn't go to the library. Um, let's see, Ksenia, what do you think? I see it so if you go to the library, you will win the book. You'll find the book. Okay, Ksenia says yeah, that. Fine. So option, the third option. Mary, what do you think? I think so. If you go to the library, you'll find the book. Okay. And so there you have the present tense in both of the parts, right? Okay, uh, Sasha, you want to show the correct answer? Of course. Ching. Yep. <laughs> Ka -ching. <laughs> okay, and I think that's, is that the last one we have? That's the last yeah. one. Yeah, have, right? it was Today. the last one. Okay, and um, we do have a, a video. Let's see, this one is pronunciation. Do we have time for uh, the short video? For today guys what do you think or do you are, are you tired <laughs> yes maybe you want to watch one, one more video okay and this is also about compound nouns but the pronunciation hello i'm john russell do you follow sports or perhaps you prefer books both of these topics can teach you a lot about pronunciation in American English. I'll explain. In grammar, we talk about compound nouns, two words that come together to carry one meaning. In many cases, the compound noun consists of two nouns, like this. Book is a noun. Shelf is a noun. 
When you put the two together, you get a compound noun. Bookshelf. Bookshelf. Or consider this example from sports. Foot is a noun. Ball is a noun. When you put the two together, you get football. Football. You might be asking yourself what this discussion has to do with pronunciation. The answer comes down to stress, saying something louder or in a higher pitch. Americans often stressed the first part or word of a compound noun, like this bookcase, bookmark, bookstore, or like this baseball, ballpark. Basketball. Now, there are compound nouns that are not spelled as one word. For example, credit card. Still, the same general idea holds true. We stress the first word credit. Credit card. That's all for today. Keep up the good work. Okay, so John Russell was. Explaining about those the stress patterns, and I think we're just about out of time for today. Um, if you like, maybe for practice, you can uh, make a conditional sentence in the Padlet, and I'll send you the link for that. And if you want, you can also practice making a conditional, oh, making a compound noun. And we don't have, yeah, so do that. So those, those as, you, as you know, you can work with the Padlet uh, between our lessons. Oops. And I forgot to turn my video on. <laughs> okay. So before we go today, uh, I have a question for you. Uh, what, uh, uh, what do you, what do you think about the uh, lessons, the lessons that you're seeing on Voice of America? Um, how I how do you? It's cool, but uh, it's uh, pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're pretty easy for you. All right. Uh, anybody else? Mary? I think that school we can teach many new things and just stay happy with other students. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, in these lessons, you're enjoying being with other students? Yes. Uh, yeah. It's very cool, funny lessons. I love them. <laughs> well, we really enjoy sharing them with you. Uh, Valentin, how about you? Uh, this lessons helped us with grammar on easy examples, like on insects or on summer holidays. Mm -hmm. All right. You learned a few insect names, right? <laughs> Okay, Paulina? I think uh, these lessons uh, are pretty and good for us because uh, we could practice English in uh, summer holidays. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. And uh, Ksenia? Yeah, it's, it's so cool. Um, I'm learning new words uh, and uh, it's very cool. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Ksenia. And Angelina? Uh, this lesson is cool because we are studying English uh, in the summer holiday. All right. Gives you a, an extra, extra chance to study, right? And yeah. Sophia? Uh, I love these lessons because I remember grammar that I have forgot for this time. And I practice my pron pronunciations. Thanks. All right. 
Well, thank you. So um, I, I got, a, we have a comment from Ostap that uh, this uh, material that we're sharing with you is for maybe for younger children. And I'd like to show you on our, our website uh, that there are actually different levels. So um, as you go back to school, if you want to practice, you can choose the material at a higher level. Uh, we've been doing the beginning level uh, with you uh, in the past few weeks. Uh, let's learn English with level one and level two. Um, and you, you remember you saw, you saw that how to pronounce uh, video and news words. But you can also look at the higher level material on your own. Uh, this is uh, health and lifestyle stories. There's also a lot of science and technology stories, arts and culture, and then an even higher level, the advanced level. Uh, you can read more about grammar there in our everyday grammar course. Uh, this is uh, uh, mostly about what's happening for education for teachers, but there are also short stories that you can listen to and read along and um, lots and lots of, of short stories there. And there's a section that Ana Mateo writes, words and their stories. So if you want to boost your vocabulary and maybe learn some idioms in English, uh, that's a good place to learn those. Here you can see some of the expressions that Ana Mateo has been teaching about lately. And, um, and then we also have something called news literacy. Uh, this is about how to watch the news or listen to the news uh, with some critical thinking. You know, sometimes you can't believe everything you see on the internet, right? <laughs> or that you see on TV. And these are uh, lessons about that. So if you uh, get a chance during the school year, you can explore our website. The, the first homepage has our lessons of the day. And uh, those are five new stories for the day. Jill, maybe so, um, yeah. you will share uh, uh, this website. Yes. In the chat. Thank you. Here you go. <laughs> uh, and of course, that, that link uh, is in our, our Padlet as well. You can use many of the, the videos are linked there and you can explore. Uh, both are, uh, I'll, I'll put it in the Padlet for today. So also on the, on the Padlet, you can work with a friend and use some of the practice materials that are here. Uh, these are activities from our Let's Learn English with Anna, and then the uh, lessons about the conditionals that we had from Let's Learn English uh, level one about the bees. <laughs> so all of those are there in the, the Padlet for this week. So thank you very much for giving us some feedback today. Any Thank questions you, before we sign off today? Thank you so much. So have a great yes, weekend. Thank we'll you. See you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you next week. Oh, there's your puppy, Anna. Bye.